Hi, everybody. I'm Amy Carlson, Legislative Fiscal Analyst and Director of the Fiscal Division in Montana. Um, we're going to run you through what the Fiscal Division does, focused on finance, revenue, expenditure, and data. I'm going to start out by introducing Joe Treem. He's on vacation, but we need to get him in here on the screen so you know who he is. So, Joe Treem, please introduce yourself briefly. Okay. Well, as Amy mentioned, uh, my name is Joe Treem. Last name is spelled T-R-I-E-M. I'm located right inside the fiscal division wing, just right in the double doors and to the left. Um, my fiscal division duties include Section A&E oversight. And what does that mean? Um, that means management assistance as needed to those two sections of the budget, which are Section A is general government, Section E is education. And it's assistance as needed. Um, there's a number of new managers that are kind of taking over those sections and a lot of those duties. So I'm there to help them and there's, they're getting comfortable in that role. Um, and then also to review reports and other, other deliverables or products to the legislature when they don't have the time or need assistance in doing that. Additionally, I have oversight over section F in a more direct role as far as we have a new analyst there and I'm bringing her up to speed on the long range planning section of the budget. Um, another area of work I do is infrastructure policy. Um, I'm in the, I think Amy and I basically have been on the ground floor since the early 2000s when she was actually working for the executive and I was as well working on infrastructure policy ideas. And we've helped the legislature put into a, a number of uh, infrastructure policy, kind of financial policy, best practices. And um, that has been one of my focuses and one that I'm also working with Josh Paulette on helping to kind of get a deeper bench on who's aware of the policies and why they exist in case the legislature wants to modify those or is considering doing something with those at a later point in time. Also related to the fiscal division duties is we're starting to deeply dive into gathering local government infrastructure data. And the anticipation is using that to analyze local government uh, needs with respect to infrastructure so we can use it along with some things you will see later in this program, which is our MARA um, group and MARA project. The other half of my job is reporting to the Legislative Council on legislative space needs and capital projects. Um, basically, we have a number of projects that have been underway and concluded, and we have a number of additional projects in the works and planning for the longer range uh, capital space needs of the legislature. So I'm helping them with that process. I'm basically um, shifting a lot of my management from personnel as we get new managers up to speed, and I'm there to help them and mentor with them uh, and then I'm just putting a lot of effort into working with outside contracted services. In other words, managing resources from that perspective that the, uh, both the finance committee and the legislature as a whole have provided me. So in a nutshell, that's basically what I do for the fiscal division. You'll see a slide later on that kind of summarizes that as far as how it fits into the entire organizational structure. Um, beyond that, back to you, Amy. Thanks, Joe. So we're going to take a look at the different aspects of the fiscal division's workload. We've got um, statewide finance, revenues, expenditures, MARA, which you'll hear more about, um, data modeling and analysis, and then branch-wide coordination. So we're going to take a deeper dive into each one of those and give you a sense of what happens in each one of them. In that deeper dive, we'll talk about what is what work do we do in those areas and what are the legislators that we who are the legislators we serve or how do we serve them. So we'll start with Susie Lindsay on statewide analysis and communication. Susie Lindsay, you should know her and get to know her because she's a great asset for all legislators in knowing who in our office knows what thing and how to get it, what you want accomplished. So go ahead, Susie. Thank you, Lindsay. And um, next slide, please. So my work is focused on the statewide analysis and communication of that. Um, to all legislators. We, I handle the general fund spending and 
report out on that uh, to make sure that's available during session. And we refer to, uh, you might hear about the general fund balance or the general fund status sheet during session. And those are weekly reporting after about legislative day 40 of the general fund, how much you have left in that fund. That fund serves as a, a resource, a funding source for the legislature can be used for any lawful purpose. Um, but it also serves as a financial reserve tool that cushions the state finances against any economic downturns. We also produce a, a variety of overall broad um, state financial reports, and we communicate the state financial information in a variety of ways to, produce, to try to pr provide clear, concise information to you that gets to the point. And all of our information lives on our website. Next slide, please. We serve all 150 legislators and legislators can use me as a resource to find information on the web or uh, which legislative staff specializes in which area of the budget or revenue. And you can always come to me and ask questions. I, I can get you to the right place and help you find what you need. Um, from our office, you might expect short online reports and videos that talk about statewide finances, the financial condition of the state, how you fund your ideas. Um, some of the videos explain different areas of the budget or tax policy or a particular funding source. We provide short summaries of the main budget bill, House Bill 2, during the legislative session, particularly when it's being debated on the House and Senate floors. You'll get a short update so that you'll know how you want to consider the budget. We also provide a lot of visual interactive data tools that allow you to dig deeper into a subject area. And at the end of this presentation, I'll be going I'll be showing you our website and how to find some of these um, information on this website. Thank you. Thanks, Susie. Next, we'll have Sam Schaefer. He's our lead revenue analyst, and he'll walk you through what the revenue team does. All right. As Amy said, I'm Sam Schaefer, and I'm the lead revenue analyst, and I primarily focus my work on individual and corporate income tax. As far as the revenue team's duties, one thing that we do each and every fall going into a legislative session, which is right now, is we produce a recommendation for the Revenue Interim Committee on essentially how much revenue the state will collect over fiscal 25, fiscal 26, and fiscal 27 when we're looking at this upcoming session. The reason that we do that is because, as Susie talked about, when we have a balance sheet, we need to know how much money is coming into the state so that you have a baseline number that you can then budget to. So that's a core chunk of our work, especially in the fall going into session, is creating forecasts for many, many different revenue sources. During the interim and during session, we do monitor money as it comes into the bank. We look at trends to see if we are above what we expected on the forecast, if we are above last year or below last year, and if needed, we'll provide analysis on reasons why revenue is coming in maybe different than what we would have ex expected. Um, in the second half of the fiscal year, we produce those reports monthly, and then we report to both the Finance Committee and Revenue Interim Committee um, in sort of a quarterly fashion with those reports. The other forecast that we generate during the interim is what's called our Outlook Forecast. And our Outlook is a document that we produce in summers leading into a session, which sort of gives the legislative body a sneak peek on what we expect to see in the upcoming session as far as the budget is concerned. Um, as bills are introduced throughout the legislative process, if there is a uh, fiscal impact and it is a tax bill, the revenue team does enter that into a system so that we can track all live bills and the fiscal impact that it then has to Susie's balance sheet. Um, outside of session, we stay very busy as well. Any sort of request that a legislator has that is in the revenue world, whether it be income tax or oil tax or lodging taxes, if we get a request for an analysis, we will produce that request. 
Um, in addition to that, during session, any legislator that walks through our door, we can help them on any revenue source, whether it be the implications of an idea they have or explaining how that particular revenue source works. We're always looking at how our revenue picture is changing. So we're constantly analyzing our evolving revenue landscape. As Dr. Paulette will speak to you in a little bit, um, when we look at MARA modeling, instead of just producing a forecast for the upcoming biennium, like we do during the legislative session, we also have MARA models that look at our revenue stream on a much longer basis. And then we can look at different economic scenarios that would change sort of the um, long-term trends, not just two year, but 10 and 20 years, and see if there's any significant changes that we can expect down the road. That sort of segues into this last bit. Um, in addition to producing forecasts, we're always looking at uh, risk analysis. And when we say risk analysis, we're talking about, you know, what is the likelihood that our revenue trends um, would deviate substantially from what is expected. And if we are in a certain time when there is high risk, we try to illustrate and quantify that to those legislators who work on the budget committees. Uh, next slide. But we don't just work for legislators that are on those uh, budget committees. We work for all legislators during the legislative session. If we are in committee, you will likely see us in House and Senate tax. Um, we also report to leadership each month to let them know if we see any uh, significant changes in the revenue picture moving forward compared to the estimate that is adopted in November before session. Um, so long story short, um, any legislator who has any questions on any sort of revenue or tax policy or quantitative analysis, feel free to stop by. Uh, there's four of us on the team, myself, Joe Vaughn, Alice Hecht, and then Kurt Swimley. Thank you, Sam. Um, next, we'll dive into expenditure analysts. Uh, analysis, these analysts do approximately half the work in the fiscal division. It's a substantial portion of all the work that we do. And so I'm gonna let Quinn and Kitty Gunther take over from here. Right, thanks, Amy. My name is Quinn Holzer. I work with uh, expenditure analysts and our staff and our expenditure analysts, if you wanna to go to the next slide there, um, work closely on individual agency budgets. And so throughout the session and interim, they work with the uh, committees that are focused on those different agency budgets. And we have uh, staff who become kind of subject matter experts and become familiar with each of those agency budgets. But they don't just work with those committee members. Our staff also work to do you know, budget and expenditure analysis for all legislators and make sure that we're available to help whenever questions arise. Throughout session especially though, um, these staff stay very busy on the creation of House Bill 2, our primary budget bill, and then doing amendments for those bills, or for, excuse me, for House Bill 2. Um, during subcommittees and then during committee actions, they're working closely with all the members of those committees to make sure that they get amendments done and en enrolled and put into House Bill 2. But then during floor action, that can be for all members of the legislature as well. So our staff, again, they work very closely with specific agencies. That's where they will focus, but then interact with committee members and all other legislators. Throughout the interim, we do end up with our staff doing a lot of uh, projects that come up, and usually those are directed by their interim budget committees, uh, those members of the subcommittees during session, or from the Legislative Finance Committee, who overall directs the direction of our staff. So we stay very busy working on those budgets, and our staff spend a lot of time becoming familiar with those. So please feel free to come to us and ask questions as they arise. Katie? So as Sam and Susie have said, we work with all legislators. So if you have any questions on budgets or spending in a particular agency or particular program within an agency, we are more than happy to help you answer those questions. Uh, during session, we uh, primarily staff a few different committees. One of those it, early on in the session is the Joint Appropriations Subcommittees. Uh, these are sections A through F. These are different um, sections within the budget. A through E are in House Bill 2, and then Section F is the long-range building program that Joe Treem had talked about earlier. Uh, so as House Bill 2 makes its way through the process, uh, we staff uh, 
different areas. One of the, or a few of those are the House Appropriations um, Committee and the Senate Finance and Claims Committee. Uh, we also uh, work at, on House Bill 2 as it goes through uh, the House floor and the Senate floor. During the interim, we have a few committees that we primarily staff. Those are the Legislative Finance Committee um, and also the Interim Budget Committees, which are the sections A through F. Those Interim Budget Committees are made up of legislators um, that uh, were a part of the Joint Appropriations Subcommittees during session. I will pass it on to Josh Blatt and Nick Van Brown to talk about MARA and data modeling. So these two sections kind of go together, data modeling and MARA. Um, and like, like Kate said, Josh and Nick will talk, take a deeper dive on these. Thanks, I'm Josh Blatt. So I'm the lead staffer for the Modernization Risk Analysis Committee, which people call the MARA Committee. Uh, and I'm also the lead for Section B of House Bill 2, which is Public Health and Human Services. So questions on that? Uh, topic, uh, feel free to come to me. Um, the Modernization Risk Analysis Committee was, was made a permanent committee uh, of the legislature during the last session, and it has a little bit of a different focus than most other committees. It has a long-term focus, so the MAR committee tends to look 10 to 20 years into the, into the future. The scope is very broad. It's state and local government revenues and expenditures, uh, in pretty much every topic area that, that you could imagine. Uh, the committee also works very closely with other legislative committees. In fact, most uh, MARA meetings in the last interim were joint meetings uh, in that other committees were invited to attend and the chair, vice chair of the attending committee were full members of MARA for that meeting. Uh, one of the roles of the MARA committee is to generate ideas. Uh, so the legislators on that uh, on the MAR committee take that seriously, and other legislators who are involved as well. And what those ideas often lead to are analytical tools uh, that uh, staff create that are intended to be useful for all legislative uh, members, you know, regardless of what committee they're on, uh, as well as partners of the legislature. And we'll show you one of those tools in a little bit. Finally, a final role for the MARA committee is to direct the data work of the fiscal division. This is another new responsibility uh, for this committee that was uh, that was added to the statute in the last session. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nick Van Brown. Nick and I work very closely on MARA together, so uh, we're pretty much side by side at any MARA meeting that you would that you would see. Yes, um, as Josh mentioned, um, I'm Nick Van Brown. So I work heavily with the data team here. Um, in addition, I work with the revenue team and section E, which is the education group. So on this data stuff, uh, one, of the big, one of the big issues is the questions we answer. And what we kind of want you all to think about is that we answer data and fiscally oriented questions. So Anything that has to do with data or anything that has to do with fiscal fiscal issues, we can help with that. Um, the data that comes in, we get from a lot of different places. Uh, we on that, and this supports all of the different things that people that you've already heard about. So we get data from state financials. We get data from the budgeting system. We get data from corrections and Medicaid and local governments and property tax. And we use all that to help answer these, these kind of questions, um, all fiscally related type questions. So this is done in a variety of ways. Um, one is if there's a tool already completed. So when you come in and ask us a question, if there's a tool that's already completed that can answer your question, that's how we will direct you first. Um, there's often a slew of questions coming at these tools. And so sometimes these questions have already been answered and we can uh, narrow it down to your area or your question pretty quickly. Uh, second, we could adjust a tool that we've already created. If there's a question that relates to an area that we've already made something on, often it's fairly straightforward to make an adjustment and get questions answered. 
And then third, sometimes we have to create something new. And that is something that we can do here, um, whether it's just um, a simple spreadsheet or a whole new tool. Um, we can answer these kind of questions um, often. So I'm going to give you an example of these tools later on as we go through the website, because they are all online. Um, they are a combination of all the all the staff that work in here, data engineers, programmers, statisticians, economists, uh, all of this expertise goes into these tools and I will show you those later. Thanks, Nick. So I'll wrap up here and then we'll hand it over to Susie and Nick at the end to um, demo some things for you. We are the fiscal division, but we're not the whole legislative branch. Um, the legislative branch is made up of different entities that all represent the 150 of you. So the legislative council is primarily leadership like people. They um, direct the work of the legislative services direct division, um, primarily information technology, financial services, HR, and other central services. We've got legal and then the research team, bill drafters, those all fit under the council. We in the fiscal division work for the legislative finance committee, which is a separate um, legislative legislator group of legislators that run the finance committee and they are our boss. Um, audit committee is similar. They have their own, they direct the work of the audit division. The house and Senate are run by either the speaker of the house or the president of the Senate. And they are the leaders for those organizations. So. We have um, five different entities that are all what we call consolidated. So it's important for all five of us to work together toward developing branch-wide policies, um, advising centralized services on the overall needs of the branch, you know, talking to each other, trying to develop what those priorities actually are, and then communicate um, from that work of understanding things with the legislature, like what are the needs of the branch. So it is important and we work hard to coordinate with the rest of the branch. The last slide I'm gonna talk about is um, the org structure of the division. There's myself, and then there's also the entire range of people that you just heard from. Joe Treem, Deputy Director, Quinn Holzer, Assistant Director, Josh Pellett, Lead Fiscal, Nick Van Brown, Assistant Director, uh, Sam Schaefer, Lead Revenue, Susie Lindsay, lead analyst, and Katie Gunther, lead expenditure analyst. So all of those people together um, oversee the work of the fiscal division and have specializations within that. And next we're gonna have Susie Lindsay walk you through website navigation. I'm gonna stop sharing and she's gonna start sharing and then we can um, walk you through how our website works. Thank you. Yeah, so you may, if you are a returning legislator, you may notice that our website has changed considerably since, um, oh, about a month ago. Um, and this website is still actively under construction. There's still areas where we are completing some of the information. Um, but I want to run through with you how to find the fiscal division and the work that we do. So there's two ways. If you're on a desktop, you'll likely see these drop downs first at the top. And you can go to fiscal and it opens and it'll give you choices. The other way to find, and if you're on a mobile phone, this will probably be your easier way to see us, is you'll scroll down a bit and you'll see a green block that says LFD. And that's us, we're always green. And if you click on that, it takes you to the home page. Um, the top, screens here are our most um, recent work. So the first slide always tells you about us, but if you click on the next slide, you'll see that these are some of the air work that we have done. Both, um, this is a joint effort between the policy side of the branch. So what Amy just mentioned when she talked about legal and researchers, um, those are the policy, and then we're the fiscal, and we created libraries where we curated a number of topics um, that you might be interested in looking at. Um, they, they cover a broad range, and when you click on one of these, you'll see 
a lot of information that will um, direct you to certain things that you might be interested in. If you continue to look at other, there's usually three to four slides at the very top here. Um, there's one on wildfire suppression funding, and there's this one on our financial outlook. And right now, this is where you might find the most information about what we see the budget looking like and the revenues looking like um, in the future. Because we're right now actively involved in estimating state revenues and analyzing the governor's budget proposal, um, those reports that we will produce on that won't be available until about uh, later in November and December. And so right now, this is your, your best look at what you might like to see um, as far as a financial outlook for the state. This is a short report. It gets to the point, hopefully quickly. You don't have to read a lot, so it won't take up much of your time. If you have questions, feel free to swing by and ask me. Um, and if I can't answer them, I will certainly direct you to someone on our expert team that can. Um, continuing, these are our main areas of the that we work on. So budget and revenue will have anything pertaining to that. The interactive tools like um, Nick Van Brown was discussing, he'll go through one of those with you today. Um, the committees, all the budget committees and the MARA committee information is all found here. We will, this, this particular committee page is under construction and we will be changing that between now and the beginning of session. All of our publications and libraries, again, are here. Any archived older uh, budget analysis or older fiscal reports, you will find them here. And then also you can view our staff page. This staff page um, tells you about a little bit about each person in more detail and which area they specialize in. So feel free to look them up if you want to, or you can just come and, and ask me who's the expert and I can direct you there. And, and now I'll stop sharing and I will um, turn it over to Nick Van Brown so that he can um, uh, go ahead and um, walk through one of the interactive tools. Nick, you're muted. All right, thank you, Susie. Um, so picking up where uh, you left off on the interactive website, or on the website, you can see this the interactive tools right here in the middle. So if we click on that, you're gonna see several tabs across here. This is the format of our website throughout. So you'll see a tab here for the budget, a tab for the revenue forecast, and a tab for other data tools. Currently, the budget and the revenue forecast are um, in flux because, as Susie mentioned, we are in the process of uh, analyzing the governor's budget and creating the revenue forecast. But typically, these will be um, a full budget tool where you can see uh, the budget at different points in the legislative process. And through session, you'll be able to see as soon as the as budgets are as a uh, new budget steps that happen, you'll be able to see those, what different committees adopted. The revenue forecast similarly, uh, once that is adopted, this will be available um, and you'll be able to see by source different re the, the revenue forecast. I'm gonna focus right now on other data tools as those are um, what we work on during the interim and they are up. Uh, you'll see a whole list of different topics here. So these all have different data tools in them. Uh, for example, I'll look at the property tax data tool and you'll see a couple tabs here. On this one, there is a tab that will give you the tutorial about how to use this tool because this one is uh, can be complicated, but it'll, it'll walk you through how to use it if you have any questions. But I'll, I'll walk you through what this thing looks like. So 
when you open these tools, uh, what you're going to see is a visual dashboard. And all of these tools use uh, a, a software called Power BI, which is a business intelligence software that just allows us to take all of our data streams and add analysis, add um, programming, add data modeling to it to get the output to make it um, a, a story out of this out of these data. So in this one, for example, here's the general property tax growth by taxing unit. And you can see that you know taxable value went up substantially in the in the past year. Um, that's a story that a lot of people are talking about. But this will allow you to break it down as to where that property tax went, um, the type of growth or the amount of growth that was in each of these areas. And it'll allow you to do things like scroll into your specific area. So if you're interested in, say, Carter County or Shoto County, you can see these graphs will adjust. And all of this data is existing in the back end. This is access to the full data set that where this analysis is happening. And so you can really dig into specific areas. Um, and even more than county, this will go into municipality, for example, you know, the city of Great Falls or the town of Belt or the town of Nyhart or the town of Cascade. So this lets you dig into certain areas. And if there's questions that you have that can be answered by this, this is a great place to start because a, a, an enormous amount of data has already is already here. An enormous amount of questions have already been asked of these tools and we put these in. Um, so this is just the first page of this tool, for example. Um, and you can see the data sources up here. Down here, you see one of 11. Um, this is might be the trickiest part of this whole thing, um, getting to the other pages. But down here, if you click, you will go to different, different pages of this report. So for example, here, this is taxes paid by class. Um, right now we're on Carter County, but you can see how the taxes paid by class happen, residential versus commercial or pipelines or whatever. Once again, you can see your county, municipalities, you can uh, focus in on, on residential um, or other classes if you're interested. And the following pages, similar ideas. This is something on a page on newly taxable. Um, this is a page on effective tax rates um, by the uh, levy districts. All of these pages have been requested at one point or another by legislators or committees. And so we've added them to this area so that questions can be answered. I think one of the more complicated scenarios here is adjustments. So for example, this uh, the state rate, um, the state residential rate is 1.35%. But this these kind of tools actually allow you to make that adjustment and see what would happen if you adjusted that state residential rate, all with a slider. Um, you know, in this case, we dropped it down to 0.99%, how much that would cost the the, the state portion um, coming from residential, right? Um, this is the state side. There's a, additionally a local side where you can adjust things like equalization mills or the GTB ratio. Um, now, these are all things, once again, that have been asked for by different committees. And not only can you do this at the statewide level, you can do this for your counties and see what is the tax difference for my county under these different scenarios? So these are the kind of tools that we create. Um, these are the kind of things that we put out there. Uh, once again, they are linked entire to our entire data sets that we gather from both state, local, outside sources. And if you have questions, um, we're happy to walk you through these, make adjustments to these, or do what it takes to answer your uh, financial and data questions. Muted again, Amy. Thank you, everybody. Um, I hope this was helpful to your understanding of the fiscal division. I hope to see you during session and during orientation. Um, take care, and we'll hope to see you soon.